Twiggs is a certified executive coach with the Automotive Training Institute who has conducted over 30,000 coaching sessions with shop owners and service managers, helping them move from feeling frustrated to finding fulfillment. He has also led organizations of 500 or more people as an automotive district manager, managing up to 17 locations at one time. After attending Eric's Mastering the Phone Fundamentals Lunch and Learn session, you will feel less pressure from the price shopper and more prepared to attract the right customers to your location. So Eric, thank you for being here today to speak to us. Hey, thank you for having me and thank you for that introduction. Man, this, this is awesome. We can go ahead and get started. Fantastic. All right. I want to make sure everybody can see my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? It should be a picture of the phone. We can. Yep. All right. So we're here today. We're talking about mastering the phone fundamentals. And as I think about mastery and I think about fundamentals, I'm reminded of one of my favorite quotes. And this comes from Bruce Lee. And here's what he had to say. He said, I'm not afraid of the man who practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I am afraid of that man who's practiced one kick 10,000 times. So, so here's where that comes into play. Quite often I'm talking to shop owners and they're trying all of these different things to improve their car count. All of these things, as opposed to mastering this one thing. And in most cases, as you'll see as we, as we move forward, if they would master the phone fundamentals, that'll get them very close to their car count goal, just doing that one thing. So we wanna be masters. We wanna master that one kick 10,000 times. Now, I, I get a lot of questions because it, we're in a pandemic, right? COVID-19, people are always asking, Eric, what do you think is going to happen? What's it going to look like a few months down the road? That's the wrong question. And in life and at your shop, it's not about having all of the right answers. It's really about asking the right questions. That's really the key to a lot of success at your shop and in life. The question we really should be asking is, how will you be better? Not what will happen, but how will you be better? And this is a great book I would recommend. It's called Measure What Matters. And that, that's really one of the themes of this presentation, measuring what matters. But th there was a great quote. It came uh, from Andy Grove, who was uh, profiled in the book. He was the CEO of Intel. And here's what he had to say about this whole crisis thing. Here's what he had to say. He said that bad companies, they're destroyed by a crisis. Good companies, yeah, they survive the crisis, but the great companies are improved by a crisis. What an opportunity we have in front of us today to improve and to, and to prove that we are a great company. And, and that's why we really need to grasp this idea of mastering the phone fundamentals. Okay, so let's talk about the fundamental problem. So what percentage of all customers would you say call before they come to a shop? Just, just really think about that answer to yourself. What, what percentage? It, it, it's a big number. It, it's 68%. 68% of customers, and that's based off of studies that have been done uh, throughout the automotive industry, the overwhelming majority of customers, they actually call before they come to your shop, right? So, so the next question to think about is, what percentage of service advisors in North America actually offer the customer an appointment? Now, here, here's the fundamental problem. And, and we actually, we did a survey you know, like we, we do these service advisor classes at ATI where we, we'll randomly phone shop, we'll call shops all over the place, and we kept track of the results. Here's what we found. You won't believe it. For every 100 calls we make, only four service advisors are offering an appointment. Four out of 100. 
So let's process this. Let's think about it. If you aren't proactively watching the phones, if you aren't measuring how we're doing on the phones, you're gambling that your service advisor or service manager is in the top 4% of the country without any involvement and interaction from you. Now, I'm not a betting person, but that, but that wouldn't even be a bet I would take, that without any interaction or involvement from you, that your service advisor is in the top 4%. Again, this is why it's so critical that we master these phone fundamentals. And, and this is the opportunity we have in front of us just by really being great on the phones. Now, here's something that really frustrates me. Karen, it really gets me. I mean, it, it really, it makes the hairs on my head stand up. When I think about this, that's how frustrating it is. You know it's bad. So I have a background as a corporate trainer. And th this is in a previous life. I spent most of my time doing phone training, right? So I would teach, teach people how to answer the phone. I would show them the phone script and they would pass my class with flying colors. But then when they go back to the shop, they would fail when it came to answering the phone. And guess what would happen? Training got the blame. No, no, let, let me be more specific. I got the blame, right? It, it, was the, it had to be a training issue why this individual is failing on the phones when he's back at the shop. And, and you may see this too, where you send someone to training or you invest in some type of phone training and they're not demonstrating what they learned. So I want to give you a formula because in many cases, it's not a training issue. There's some other issues. We, we need to really figure out what's keeping people from answering the phones like they should be. And it's the head, heart, hands formula. Okay. So first, you know it's a head issue if the person lacks the knowledge or skill to execute on the phones, right? So, so that's a head issue. And a head issue can be fixed with training. And, and here's a quick way to know if you've got a head issue, and that is if you do a role play. I, I'm telling you, I'm a huge fan of doing role plays because that's where you see what, what's going on. And if you do a role play and you role play the phone process and your service manager executes that phone process to a T, it's not a head issue. They know what to do. If they're not performing, it's because they're not doing what they know, right? There's a difference between knowing what to do and doing what you know. So we need to know, is, is it a head issue? If they don't have the knowledge and skill, it is a legitimate training opportunity. So next, is it a heart issue? And, and this, is, this is common. So there's several components to the heart issue. Number one, do they understand what's in it for them? Do they understand why, how they're going to benefit? Do they understand why it's good for the company? We need to make sure that that's covered. They need to understand what's in it for me. And then we need to get the motivation down to the individual level, right? So, so if you're talking about an individual, people are motivated by the carrot or the stick quite often, right? So some people are carrot people. They're motivated by what they can gain by answering the phone correctly. Hey, you know what? I can make more money. We can gain more customers. You know, so they, they're motivated by what they can gain. I, I can finish at the time, you know, I can win this contest if I'm we're having a contest in the shop. But then there's some people, they want to avoid, they're, they're motivated by the stick. So they're motivated by avoiding a negative consequence or a negative outcome. So you tell that person, hey, you know what? We can lose business if we're not answering the phone correctly. Or there's a negative consequence for you personally. You're going to have to have this uncomfortable conversation with me, the boss. So sometimes that motivates people. So we need to be looking at, is the, is the proper motivation in place? You know, do we, some people need to know what the consequences are. So, so we need to make sure we're, we're applying the necessary consequences. And the bottom line is that some people, their want to is just broken, right? You can explain all day. You can, they can be a carrot person. You can provide the carrot. They can be a stick person. You can provide the consequences. They still are just not willing to do it. Maybe they're just the wrong person. But that's not a training issue. Because in many cases, they know what to do. They have the knowledge and skill. 
We've talked about the head issue. We've talked about the heart issue. So next is hands, right? Do, do they have the necessary support? Do they have the necessary resources? It could be something as simple as maybe they're by themselves on the counter all the time. They know what to do. They're motivated to do it. It's just they've got five customers giving them dirty looks and three phone lines ringing at the same time. So they, they're just, they're focused more on the clock than they are, or they're more focused on, you know, just getting, getting things done and, and getting things, uh, getting things ready. So we, we need to make sure that we address the hands issue. Do they have the necessary support? Are the phones working properly? Do we, uh, do, are the terminal, computer terminals working? Is it a head, heart, or hands issue? Very important that we figure it out. So we're going to talk today about the fundamentals. Remember we talked about how it's that one kick 10,000 times. These are the fundamentals that should be in place. We've got smiling, we've got pricing, and we've got measuring. So let's get to work. First, let's talk about smiling. So there was, this had to be like the late 80s. He was a, a shop owner. He had multiple Midas locations. He had this weird thing he would do at his locations. So, so at each location, he had these mirrors set up. And he also had it, it was written, how am I doing on the top of each of these mirrors? It, it was a weird thing. Well, as it turns out, one of his big things was smiling over the phone. And it, it was just a part of his culture. And it was understood that if he had to have several conversations with you when it came to smiling on the phone, you weren't going to be working there long. That was just his thing. He was just particular. And the mirror was to be a reminder that when you look, were you smiling on the phone? It sounds crazy, but, but let, let's break it down to see why he had this in place. There's something you need to be aware of. It's called the 7% rule of communication. We're trying to understand why it's so important that the person answering the phone should be smiling. So this 7% rule of communication, it came from this professor. His name is Albert Morabian. He came from the University of California. This came out of the 70s. He, turned out, he, he, he discovered that 7% of the message that you're trying to convey comes from the actual words that you use. That's it only 7%. He went further to find out that 38% of your message comes through your tone of voice. And this explains why two people can use the same script, but get a different result. And it comes across completely different. And when you're smiling, it changes your state, your, 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 state, your tone of voice improves. This comes across that much better. Look at 38%. And then 55% of the message you're trying to convey comes through your body language. So smiling has everything to do with a successful call. And try this later. Try this later, what I'm about to say. Prove it. Prove it to yourself. Ready? It is impossible to smile and experience a negative emotion at the exact same time. Try it. See, I see some people smiling now. You don't feel a negative emotion right now. It, it is physically impossible. I mean, think about it. We all have those days where everything is going wrong. You get yelled at by the customer. But when you smile, you start to feel better. And you feeling better comes across very well to the customer. So that's why this is so important. And I don't feel like it gets emphasized enough. So one of the elements and aspects of a successful phone call is, can I hear the smile? on the other end. So anything we need to do to remind ourselves, whether it's the mirror, I'm gonna give you another example here, a friendly reminder where you actually have it labeled on the phones. Uh, several of our, our successful shops, they have it labeled on the phones uh, to smile. I mean, it, it's very important. Any, anything you can do to remind yourself is only gonna help. Okay, so we've talked about smiling. So next, I'm going to get into a, a controversial topic here, right? It's about pricing. Pricing over the phone. 
and it's been proven, and this isn't even an argument I'm going to even take on, but, but it's been proven that it, you want to sell the visit, you want to get the customer to the location and not necessarily quote prices over the phone, right? We know we'll get into this more here in a little bit, but I'm going to tell you a story, and, and I wish this story wasn't true, Ron. I wish I was making this up, <laughs> but but this is a true story of something I heard. I'm, I'm listening to a phone recording, right? And the customer calls. Customer says, "Hey, you know, I've got this 2014 Ford Fusion. I need a price on brakes." Here's what the service advisor says. Well, yeah, you see, I, I just got back from this ATI class and I was told that I'm not allowed to give you a price over the phone. True story. A classic example of what not to do. That was my reaction. It still bothers me when I think about it. So the question is, what does right sound like? And that was an exaggerated but true example, but I hear that all the time. We, we, we come across like we're just towing the company line. So the customer asks us for a price. We come across like the boss is standing right behind us and, oh, no, I can't tell you. It's, it's a secret. I, I can't. I'm, I'm going to get fired. That, that, that's how we come across. But really, we need to come across in a way that benefits the customer because that's really what it's all about. It's a benefit to the customer. We can't accurately diagnose what's going on with the customer's vehicle until we see it. So we need to communicate and convey that to the customer. It's not about towing the company line. It's about benefiting the customer. And so here's how it sounds. Here's an example of how it sounds. Well, Mr. Customer, yes, I understand that price is important to you, but I know it's also important that you get an accurate price. And to do that, I need to see the vehicle. Now, I've got openings in the morning i have an opening in the afternoon which time frame works best for you that's an example of what right sounds like but but you, the key is we really want to focus on selling the appointment now you, you're not going to bat a thousand you're going to have some customers that no matter what you say no matter how well you explain it they're still going to haggle you over the price. They're still going to pressure you for the price. And, and here's the reality. Many of those customers aren't your ideal customer. You just have to accept that. They, they just aren't your ideal customers. And, and I, there's some customers that give you, and we, I call them cringe customers. <laughs> here's why I call them cringe customers. You see their name come across the caller ID and you just cringe. They're cringe customers because every time they come, it, it's a haggle. It, they're, they're complaining about the price. Well, what's my real price? Well, can I get a discount? They can't understand the idea of investing in their vehicle and maintaining their vehicle. They just feel like they suck the life out of you every time you talk to them. I mean, again, this is the exception. Some customers just aren't your customer. We just have to accept that. The key is just consistently executing the process and explaining to the customers why it benefits them to come in that way we can give them an accurate diagnosis but I, I just i like to mention that because i don't want you to think that even when you get really really good at this you're going to have 100 percent success that's not going to happen but that's what right sounds like we shouldn't be doing the price of uh, quoting a price over the phone the other thing is sometimes you get into this price thing customers they don't have a relationship with you in the shop yet if they're new so if they just hear a price and then they call someone else and hear a lower price they may go there so you can lose you can lose some business if you're consistently quoting prices over the phone because that doesn't tell the true story it's critical that we make sure that we're selling the visit this is very important okay so we've talked about smiling so everybody now understands the 7% rule of communication. We've talked about pricing, where you really shouldn't be pricing over the phone. Yeah. Um, so next, we're going to talk about measuring. And again, this is a big part of the theme of this presentation. 
that book I mentioned earlier is titled Measure What Matters. We need to be measuring what matters. When I think about measurement, I, I have this scale up here. And here's why. Because I know of people who have lost weight simply because they have this habit of measuring their weight. They weigh themselves at the same time every day. Having that measurement in front of them motivates them to do different things and make better decisions when well, they see their weight fluctuating up and down on a daily basis. That's why measurement is critical. So no, do you get into a consistent no, no. habit of measuring what matters and measuring our performance on the phones. This is so critical. I mean, you can't manage what you're not measuring and measurement is really the key to movement. You want to move something? I don't care. Pick an indicator in your business. It could be cash flow. It could be anything. You really start tracking it. That's when it starts to move. So we're going to go through several things to measure. So there's a phone log. There's a phone script. There's phone shops. And then phone recordings. We're going to talk about each of these items in detail. But again, if you're not measuring what's going on the phones, I'll repeat this just for emphasis. You are gambling that your service manager or service advisor is in the top 4% of the country without any input or involvement from you. Not very likely. Okay. So, so let's look at the phone log. So I just love this phone log. So it, it gives you the opportunity this this gives you the opportunity to log the phone call and what i recommend is getting the customer's name and phone number right up front at the beginning sir ma'am is it okay if i get your name and number just in the event that we get disconnected right you get the name and number you you make the appointment now you've got a record of everybody that's calling now you you've got the opportunity they didn't come in. They made an appointment on Monday uh, and they didn't come in. Now it's Thursday. You can call back and check in to make sure everything is okay. You've got a record, but the phone log is really important. It also helps you to remember the necessary details. You know, one of the things, again, I listen to recordings. We lose a lot of credibility with the customer because we, we can't remember the details. I mean, classic example, again, I, I'll hear somebody, they're on the phone. Customer says, hey, you know, I've got my 2018 Toyota Camry and I need tires. And we say, okay, that's great. What's the year making model of the vehicle? We instantly lose credibility. And, and maybe the customer doesn't call you on it. But in their mind, they're thinking, okay, this person, they really weren't listening to me. So the phone log helps us uh, with that. It also helps you to track your conversion percentage, your batting average, because according to industry studies, two out of every three phone calls you get should result in an appointment that you see in your shop. So you should be, it should be around 66%. Two out of every three phone calls should be resulting in that customer coming in. And you can actually notate, you know, if, if the customer had an appointment, you can track the batting average. Again, you can't manage what you're not measuring. You won't know if you're, what your percentage is. You could be at 30%, 40%. You can't see the opportunity if you're not measuring it. So that's why the phone log is critical. I would encourage you to make sure you've got this in place at your shop. And then there's also a, a phone script. So this is something that's got the key points and the key elements to, to a successful phone call. And the goal is to have this by every phone. So that every person that's answering the phone, they can see what, what are the key elements that I should be honing and harping on uh, when I'm on the phone. I'm going to point out four key elements that are in the phone script. Did you hear the smile? So if we're looking to you know, measure, Here, here's some things we need to look for. Could you hear the person smiling over the phone? And it's definitely a noticeable difference. Did they quote a price? That's the other thing. Did they offer an appointment? Again, we already said only four out of 100 
are offering the appointment. We, we really need to make sure that the phone call isn't ending with us without us offering that appointment opportunity and presenting that appointment opportunity to the customer. And then the bottom line, would you bring your car to this shop? I mean, I can't tell you how many calls I've listened to where technically we've checked every box, we've said all the things, but it didn't sound like they re were really interested. Didn't, they weren't really asking questions to the customer. It didn't sound like they really wanted the business. So these are some key things. I mean, feel free to take a picture of this particular slide, but this is how you know the person is winning on the phones. If, if these four key elements are in place, with the phone call. Was the shopper one or not? So here's some options as far as recording the phone call. And I just, I firmly believe that every shop in America should be recording all incoming calls and they should be recording all of the outgoing calls. Again, it, it's really about that measurement. And I would challenge you to take it a step further. So now that once you start recording, the phone call, you sit down with your service advisor and instead of just telling them what you think they did well and what you think they could approve on, I'd ask them. Say, so, so Eric, listen to that call. How do you think he did? How'd it go? And getting back to my earlier point, you'll know if it's a head issue right there. So if they're able to tell you right out of the book, hey, you know what? I didn't do this, I didn't do that, I didn't do this. You know they know what to do. You, you know for a fact they know what to do. Or if there's a, there could be a major disconnect. They could think it's a great call, but the, the results are saying otherwise. So I, I think it's, it's just critical that we are recording these phone calls and then a lot, getting feedback from uh, the, the service advisor. Here's your twigs takeaway. How you do anything is how you do everything. That's very important because there are times where I'll phone shop someone and, or maybe even I'll role play with them and they don't do well. They don't hit the key points. And, and then they'll say that they'll go back to the shop owner and say, oh yeah, well, you know, I, I knew it was Eric. So I, I didn't really follow it, but normally I do. It was just, I knew it was a phone shop. Don't buy that. How you do anything is how you do everything. So again, for example, if you're having someone outside of your shop, let's say it's, it could be a relative, it could be someone, you're having them call and pretend to be a customer and evaluate how your service advisor is answering the phone. However, that service advisor is answering during that phone shop. That's what he's doing, he or she is doing all the time. But please don't accept that. Please remember the fact that how you do anything is how you do everything. It's critical. So since you've been such a great listener, I'm gonna leave you with some tools. I'm gonna coordinate with Karen. I'll make sure you have these tools. So you'll have a copy of the phone script. So you'll see the key elements. These are the elements that should be by the, each of the phones. And remember those four things we talked about uh, that make up a good call. The phone log, so you'll have a copy of that. Remember two out of every three phone calls should result in an appointment that you see coming into your doors. I'm also going to leave you with a price shopper script. So that's, an, that, that's specific wording that you'll be able to use. So if the customer's haggling about the price, well, hey, I really wanna know what the price is, how much does it cost? I, I have a script that has specific words that you can use to improve your success rate. Again, please keep in mind, you're not going to bat a thousand. Uh, there's some customers, they just, again, remember talked about the cringe customers, some customers just aren't your customer. You just need to know that, but focus on getting better and better at the process. That's really the key. Uh, and then there's a webinar, there's a link to a webinar that I'll give you access to. It's Psychology of the Phone Shopper. Uh, it really gives you some, some good tips on 
answering the phone. But, but those are some tools and some resources that I'm going to leave you with. Uh, another thing is the call requirement. There's going to be a separate sheet. Uh, and that uh, thing I showed on the screen, it had different call recording options, uh, Ring Central, and there's quite a few others, OMG. Uh, you, you'll have that as well. But I, again, I would encourage you to have some type of a system at your shop where you can record all of your incoming and your outgoing phone calls. So you'll have a copy of a sheet and you can go through and see which option is the best fit for you. So we're now at the takeaway portion of the show. So I, what I wanna know at this point, and at this point you can certainly feel free to unmute yourself. Let's yell out one good idea you got from my presentation that you plan to use. Just one good idea. Let's take yourself off of mute. What, what are your takeaways? I need to smile more. You need to smile more. Okay. Very good. Remember to have those, those cues set up. You can have the mirrors. Uh, you can have it labeled on the phone to smile. I've seen both of those are effective. What else? What other takeaways? Ask for the appointment. Ask for the appointment. Remember, it, on, on average, only four out of 100 are asking. We need to make sure that is a, a critical part, and, and we're tracking and measuring that. What else? Other takeaways? Listen to the recordings. Yes, very good. So make Another sure one to, uh, get away from price quotes. Yes, yes. So we want to listen to the recordings. And again, in the tools that I'll leave with you, you'll have all the different options. Um, someone said, get away from uh, price quotes. Again, we want to let the customer know the reason and a way that it's going to benefit them. At the end of the day, we want to sell the visit. One more. All right, I'm going to help you out. So here's some takeaways. Again, we talked about this. Set up some smile reminders. Don't quote prices over the phone. Implement a measurement system. And making sure that we've got the ATI phone scripts uh, by every phone. So those are just some, some key takeaways. Uh, just make sure we're focused on what we're going to implement. So at this point, before I close, I'll open it up to any questions that you may have on this phone process. Do we have any questions? Well, thank you, Eric. Okay, so. Appreciate the presentation, great job. So thank you. I learned, learned a lot from that. Uh, panel and I were texting back and forth a little bit, you know, we, we, uh, we really like what you were saying and we've been talking about the phone scripting and, and that kind of stuff. So I um, really appreciate that. Uh, I've learned a bit myself today. So uh, thanks everyone for being on and, and uh, really appreciate you, Eric. Uh, how about a hand for Eric? Everybody can clap, yeah, there we go. So, um, and then don't forget uh, next week, uh, August 27th um, at one o'clock, our Lunch and Learn. Is going to be conflict uh, versus confrontation by Rick uh, White, and we hope to see you there. Thanks everybody for being on. Have a great day. Thank you. Take care, everyone. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. No, thanks, Eric. Take care. Great job, Eric. Thank you.